Hey, what's up, guys? This is Guy here with KB Trainings, where I share with you my passion in networking and IT in general. So today I'm going to do some labs. Um, this is for the Encore 350-401. It's, um, it's an exam that goes toward your CCNP or the CCIE. I'm working for the CCIE right now, and I hope to um, take the, the Encore exam in a couple of months, um, maybe in maybe two months i'm just finalizing everything and make sure i'm ready for it so um here on kb trainings you know i share with you these kind of things and if you want to watch me or if you want to see all my documentation and also see all the links because um in a video like this i'm not going to explain like the theory i'm not going to explain the technology and go in detail i can just say what it is but if you want to know more i know i'm not creating a course for the encore um i'm creating a course for the ccna 200 301 right now so if you are studying for the ccna go on kbtrainings.com forward slash ccna you're going to find those classes and uh but this is for the encore and it's just me sharing what i'm doing it's just me trying to build a community around this exam so if you want to be part of it go on kb trainings uh kbtrainings.com forward slash encore you're going to see all that i'm putting on there for this um, for this exam and I think I can create a forum where we can talk you know exchange ideas and ask questions and and wonder and cry and all of that so I, I can create that space for you so today it's about switching today we starting with layer 2 switching VLANs and trunking we're going to talk about DTP or dynamic trunking protocol on the website kbtrainings.com forward slash encore you're going to find the links for you to read if you want to master this if you want to know what it is in detail so um, VLANs are VLANs you know you take one big network you cut it into small VLANs for many reasons security segmentation traffic um, engineering no, maybe just, I don't know. Yeah, there are many reasons why you need VLANs in your network. And uh, trunking is a link that is between two switches and that's carrying more than one VLAN. Normally, if you have just an access port or you can connect two access ports in the same VLAN, they can still talk, but it's not going to be um, suitable for other VLANs in your network. So that's why you need to create a trunk between those two switches so that you can carry all the VLANs that you want, or you can restrict them. Uh, to, you can restrict the trunk to a certain VLAN. And um, yeah, that, that's pretty much what you have to know about it. The other things will be explained in the links that I'm going to give you down here. And also you can get more detail uh, by watching the labs and doing your own lab. As I said, I really like having uh, a clean slate for me to do my lab. So I don't want to, I don't like to have anything pre-built by someone that I'm trying to follow. I just like to grab and drop my own routers, my own switches and build my own labs. That's what I'm going to do now. So let's really get into it. I'm going to create a file and drag the the network devices today we're not going to do anything with routers it's going to be just switches and this is the beginning of a topology that will end up maybe with i don't know 25 or 30 um, equipment so it's starting today with two switches uh, two switches and over time it will grow depending on what we're doing and it will be based on this same topology to get started i'm going to create a new file i'm going to name it uh, I'm going to name it KB Trainings um, Switching Switching um, Yeah, Switching Labs Okay, this is going to be the file and I click on OK This is what we're going to do in this thing, in this lab um, So we are just going to have two switches and um, these are going to be the connections on the switches between the switches and we will have three vlans the vlan one the default vlan with this ip subnets and um, the vlan 20 and vlan 30 we're also going to have three pcs per vlan i mean three pcs per switch and one pc per vlan on each switch so to get started let's bring our switches in the game two switches switch one and switch two and then we're going to bring 
six VPCs because we we need um we need two PCs one PC oh yeah two PCs per per VLAN okay it's gonna be like this and um what else and then we're going to grab the cable and connect the different devices so the pc1 will be in vlan 1 the pc2 will be in vlan 20 i'm going to put it on the port 2 slash 0 pc3 on the port 3 uh, slash 0 pc4 will be in vlan 1 pc5 will be in VLAN 2 and PC 6 will be in VLAN 3 and let me just put the IPs here as well so this is going to be 10.0.10.2 slash 24 and then let me duplicate that for the other devices alright so we know exactly what IP has what VLAN, like what device has what IP. So we're gonna duplicate this for here and duplicate it for there. Um, so this is going to be 20, this is 30, and that is that three. that three and 20 and that 30 and three here all right so this is our topology and also i like to put the the labels on the ports uh, this side is not really important mostly this side here so gig one gig two gig three zero zero one two three <clears throat> okay so our topology is ready let's power on everything all right so the devices are powered on what i can do is okay i have some basic commands that i always put in a device when i create it um these are just for convenience when you are building a new topology should be my one note here all right so these are the commands that i usually uh, run on a new device um so the, the first device will be switch one so i copy this and i open switch run with secure crt okay this is switch one it's still booting up but meanwhile, I can also, I can already take care of the, uh, let me just open switch two, so it's going to be next to switch one. And then I'm going to open the PCs. And then four, five, six. Six. Okay. So let me push the topology over here so I can have my CLI right there. Let's see. Oops. Um, where is my CLI? Okay, it's here. Um, I'm trying to make everything fit in this screen. I usually, I have three screens right now, but for the recording, I, I need to put everything on this screen here. So what we're going to do first is configure these PCs. Let me go ahead and just give them the IPs. So the first one is going to be 10.0.10.2 slash 24. I'm going to give it, um, I'm going to give it the default gateway, even though it's not ready now, but uh, I just need it to have it.
um, PC4 10, that 0, that 10, that 3 PC5 And the last one is the PC, the PC6 Okay, so <clears throat> first of all, I hope you already understood that I have three PCs per switch and I have uh, three VLANs across, across these two switches. So the VLAN 1 has PC1 and PC4. So VLAN 2 has PC2 and PC5. VLAN 3 has PC3 and PC6. So this right now is not a trunking port. Uh, we can see that by going in the switch first of all as i told you i want to make sure that i have those initial command for the switch this here so this is switch one i'm just gonna pass it on here um the file name initial config and i save it and I'll do the same for switch two, but I changed the username to switch two. I mean the, the host name. Um, I think it didn't save. Maybe it did. Oh, damn it. I need to set up a DNS. <coughs> All right, so um, while the switch two is doing its thing, we can come over here and verify that um, we have all the ports in VLAN one. So this is the switch one. So on here, we can verify that SOAR interface status. It's kind of slow, I don't know why. But yeah, you can see that uh, all the ports are in VLAN 1 per um, as per default. And we have four, um, we have four interfaces that are up and connected. We can also run sure interface trunk. There's no trunk in this device. Um, and we can look at our interface that is connected to the uh, to the switch to which is uh, interface gig zero uh, slash zero um, not really much to see here we see that it already received or sent 43 packets and uh, what is the input yeah already received 180 packets input so we can look at the switch port So you can see that the port, the switch port is enabled on this interface. And right now it's on dynamic auto. And if you know anything about DTP, this means that this port or this interface doesn't initiate any, any um, trunking uh, with the neighbor. So it's waiting for the neighbor to for the neighbor to say something. Um, so until there is any type of solicitation from the neighbor, it's not going to do anything in terms of truck uh, of trunking. So right now, that's why you see that the access, um, the negotiation of trunking is on, but the port is operating under static access mode. So it's right now an access port, and the only thing that can uh, go through it is a VLAN one, which is a native VLAN. It doesn't need any tag on it. We can try that by being on the port on the PC one and trying to ping PC four. Uh, let me go here and uh, launch a packet capture on this on this link so we can have an idea on what's going on. So this is Wireshark launching. And you can see that we already have a spanning tree protocol uh, packets being sent back and forth. So what I'm going to do now is come on PC1 and ping 10.0.10.3, .10 .10 which is the PC4. 
and see if we have any response. Yes, we're receiving response from PC4. And if we come back on this packet capture, let me stop the packet capture. We can analyze it and see that when I launched the thing, uh, the pings from PC1, PC1 did a broadcast for ARP to get the MAC address of the PC4. So who has 10.0, that's 10.3, tell me, I'm 10.0, that's 10.2. And uh, there is a response from 10.0, uh, that's 10.3 responding, and then the PC1 started sending the SEMP packets or the pings. So that's what we have now. And when you when you look at the packets coming, uh, being exchanged between the switches, you can see that, let's say, this one is an, a, a DTP packet. So the content of the DTP packet doesn't really say a lot, but it's also, I mean, it's just letting the neighbor know that I'm an access port, but I'm auto, which means I'm open to becoming um, I'm open to becoming a, a trunk with you if you want. Um, I'm open to create a trunk with you. That's what I should said. Uh, so operating, it's using ISL negotiated for now. If it wants to build trunk, it's going to negotiate ISL. But you know that ISL is not in the scope of the, of the Encore exam. So it, you, we need to stick to dot one q So this is going to be changed. I'm going to change that. Uh, let's go in the switch. Switch port is enabled. Administrative mode is dynamic auto. Operation operational mode is static. Um, administrative trunking encapsulation negotiate. So this can be negotiated, but I don't want it to negotiate. I want it to be um, 802.1q. So I'm going to change it really soon. And uh, operational trunking encapsulation native. Um, negotiation is on, access mode is VLAN 1, um, and all of that. So it's just like a regular port. So let's go ahead and configure it. I want it to not negotiate the encapsula encapsulation. I want it to be um, dot one Q for, uh, dot one Q for sure. So what I'm going to do is switch port trunk. Oh, no. Interface gig zero slash zero switch port trunk encapsulation dot one q and if we do do show slash uh, zero slash zero switch port you can see that the encapsulation mode is now set to dot one q so what we have to do is change one of these switches to become a dynamic desirable or just to force it to trunk. So as I said at the beginning of this video, these are different combinations that you have. So if you have um, dynamic auto and dynamic auto, there's no trunk. If you have dynamic auto connected to dynamic desirable, Yes, there is a trunk. And if you have trunk connected to, to if you have trunk connected to dynamic desirable, you're going to have a trunk. And if you have trunk connected to dynamic auto, not sure about that, let's check. Let's go and switch one and force it to be we are still under the interface so switch port mode trunk okay let's see what's happening um do show interface trunk okay so if you have trunk on one side and dynamic um auto on the other side you have trunk Uh, what is what are different combinations so if you have access of course and whatever you have here there is no trunk all right so i already created a trunk created a trunk between the two devices like the two switches and we can see here that 
we can see here that uh, we have a, a, a trunk in, um, in a, on the interface gigabit zero slash zero. It's using edo to one q for encapsulation. It's trunking right now, and the native VLAN is VLAN one. We can also see that it's allowing all these VLANs. Um, yeah, it's allowing all these VLANs, and right now, oh, okay, I just realized that we haven't created the VLAN yet. That's why I couldn't even ping from PC2 to PC5, because the only thing that is separating them is just the subnet. Because the subnet masks are different, they, are, they have no way to communicate. They are currently sending the traffic to the... They're sending the traffic, they're trying to send the traffic to the other device, but it's not responding to the ARP because it's not crossing. And it cannot ping any other, even though all of them are in the VLAN one, they cannot ping each other because the the subnet masks are different between them. So that's why if I'm on PC1, for example, let me learn some capture here. If I'm on PC1 and I'm trying to ping, and I'm trying to ping PC2, you're going to see that PC1 will try to send that traffic to the um, to the default uh, gateway, but it's not going to go anywhere because yep, because there's no okay. It's not actually going to do anything. Okay. Right, right right here you can see that the PC2 is trying to get the MAC or the, the yeah the MAC address of its uh, default gateway which is 10.0.10.1 but it's not receiving any response. It sent the second time no response and it can't do anything so it just says okay, that um, it says that the gateway is not reachable so you can see it from here. And um, yeah, that's all we can do. So let's go ahead and create those VLANs in the switches. So right now, as I said, we are not doing any uh, VTP or anything like that. So I'm, I'll have to create VLAN on both on both sides. So the, the way that I like to create VLANs is to go under the interface that I want to assign the VLAN to. Uh, like in this case, I want to go under the interface under the interface gig no it should be here gig two slash zero and just say switch port access vlan 20. all right it says access vlan doesn't exist creating vlan 20. so the vlan 20 is created and i can go in the interface gig three slash zero and do the same thing but this time for the vlan 30 and it's created if we do show vlan you can see that these two ports are now in different vlan and uh, i can rename the vlans if i want to but that's not really necessary and um, we can go on the other end on switch two and do um, interface gig zero slash two uh, switch port access VLAN 20 and then uh, do the same thing for s oh no sorry is that what I did on the end no okay I picked the wrong port on switch two so what you can do in this case because if you look at the port you can see that the 0 slash 2 is assigned to VLAN 20, but I didn't want it. So what I can do here is conf t. I can do the default command. Default 0 slash 2. All right, that will restore the, the configuration on VLAN 20. I mean, on the port zero slash two, you can see that zero slash two is now back to VLAN one. So what I meant was to change interface gig two slash zero, uh, switch port access VLAN 20. Okay. And I go under three slash zero and I do switch port access VLAN 30. That's it show VLAN 
Yep, we can see that the two slash zero and three slash zero are now in the VLAN uh, th 20 and 30. And we still have a packet capture here. Let me open um, Wireshark to see exactly what's going on on this link. That's why I like packet, I mean, um, Wireshark. You have a view on everything. So, uh -uh, this was this is old. Let me let me stop the capture, stop it here as well, and start a new capture. All right, so this is new. Let's wait for some DTP packet to be sent across so we can take a look. Uh, okay, DTP is here. If we look at this DTP packet, you can see that the switch is in trunk mode, but it's auto. So this is switch one, I guess. No, this is switch two. Um, and it's also doing 802.1Q negotiated. If we are, if we try to get some DTP from the other switch, you can see the difference. So this is where we configured things manually. So this one says DTP is, I mean, trunking is on because we manually or we hard coded the switch to keep the trunking on. And also it's doing 802.1Q because that's what is set on this switch. So this forced the configuration or the negotiation on the other switch because we manually um, tell it to do so. So what we need to make sure now is just that the PC2 can ping the PC5. So we're going under PC2. And let me stop this capture and launch a new capture on this port. So we're going to see how the you know the broadcast is going to happen, the ARP is going to happen, and everything. I don't know why it doesn't open it automatically. Um, start wire shark. Okay, so because we're running there, let's go under PC one or PC two and ping. Ten dot zero dot twenty dot three, which is on the other end, and we can ping it. And if we take a look at the packet capture, you can see that uh, it didn't even do the ARP. Maybe you knew it already. Okay, yeah, the ARP is here. So it sent the ARP for address resolution, and it received the response, and then started sending the pings. And that was across this link over here. Yeah, Wireshark is really good. You can analyze the packet and see exactly what's being sent across. Uh, like this DTP here, you can open it, but you have like you have the summary on here. But if you want to go deep, if you know how to read the the different codes and and stuff inside the packet, you can still do it on here. But Wireshark is already giving you the summary that you need to know about whatever protocol you are trying to read on here. And it, it's a pretty good tool. We're going to use it a lot in our labs. So we can also go under PC3 and try to ping the PC6. We can ping it without any problem. So right, that's what I wanted. This is the beginning. This is the very first video on this. Um, I'm going to create way more than this. It was small, quick, but good to master all of that, to capture all the packets. That's what you should be doing when you're doing your labs. You're going to master things and um, you need to come up with a lot of what if scenarios in your head. When you do that a lot, you get creative and um, you ask yourself the kind of question that will probably come in the exam. You'll be just fine if you're doing that kind of work. Thank you for your time. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video. And uh, we can also see each other on kbtrains.com forward slash encore. And that's where a lot is going to happen. See you there. Have a good one. Bye.